You know, um, I did. I had a bad T-shirt on this morning, which is one of my all-time favorite T-shirts. It's this teeny bopper band it? called Laney, L-A-N-Y. It's super faded and gross. And I was going to wear it. Uh, and I guess I'm going against my advice, but I was like, fuck, you got to be like a, a legit business guy. So I went up and put my black shirt oh, on. This is, like the, this is the intersection. I do like this shirt. Yeah. But this is the intersection of trying to meet professional life with where I fit. I don't do the blazers that everybody else in our industry does. I just feel uncomfortable in them. I don't pretend to find joy in some of the process and protocol that other people pretend is interesting in our industry. But I, I think if you, if, you, if you do that thing where you trust your body and you show up as yourself, it's just all of a sudden work. To me, this is important. I did not want to be a work person and then a personal person. And people at work knew me as one thing. But people in my professional life knew I was actually like. It's been so much better integrating who I am across everything. Yeah, I, I really respect that. So that sauce that. took a long time to ferment and distill and all that. But you bottled it up, you're selling it, people are <laughs> buying it. You still don't know if it tastes as accurate as it could, but it's still some really damn good sauce. And that's what matters. And that you had fun uh, making the sauce. Did you have fun making the sauce? Not all the time. I suffered a lot. I did not have fun. I have not had fun throughout my career. Talk more about the suffering. Like what part of suffering? I still suffer. You Okay, go on. Like when you're making the sauce and if you're suffering, what are the so, elements that make you suffer? So first of all, I don't ever remember consciously making this sauce. All I did was persist and sure. over time things became apparent to me. So it isn't like I was like, I'm going to build this skill. Like I, all my performance reviews would be like, your, your brain goes all over the place. You need to learn to focus. And I was like, fuck, I need to learn to focus. And I'd be like, uh, like that. And then it'd be like, well, I, no, where can I be a guy that has a million ideas and is creative and my energy is celebrated? That's what I don't need to change who I am. I need to go someplace where who I am is valued. So, so the suffering, this, oh, do you hear my dogs going crazy upstairs? The, the suffering is. Most of the time, suffering is when I tried to pretend things weren't what they were and that I was somebody who I was not. So whether it was when I was at Anderson Consulting, proofreading technical manuals and then try and then I was like, well, I don't want to proofread technical manuals, but maybe the next great job at Anderson would be this. I spent six years chasing the, you know, trying to grasp the ring in an arena that I didn't care about at all. I have respect for Anderson Consulting now Accenture, but it was the place where I was going to make my career. And I and, and people say, yeah, but look at all the learning you got. I think that's true. I just think at first it took me a long time to see the lessons, to understand my body and to have the confidence and the fearlessness to show up as myself. And what's what ex, what has accelerated over time is I can just identify. I can feel it more quickly. I don't spend as much time in guilt and shame and fear. And it, it, now my suffering comes when I end up in a meeting and it's a bunch of senior people like me and everybody's saying the same thing and it seems like we're going to do something and I hear inside my body that this isn't true and it isn't going to work. And I say, that's not true and it's not going to work. And then everybody turns and I'm like, oh God, I wish I could have kept quiet, but I can't anymore. So the suffering is, is, is it, uh, it's either... The, the suffering is inevitable. Like That's the salt that goes into the sauce. Yeah. And 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 I initially suffered because I maybe wasn't doing things the right way. And now I suffer because in order to pursue things the way that I want to, it, it doesn't mean I'm always going to be in harmony with everybody around me. But the difference, I think, is there's a kind of nobility or a purpose to the suffering that I do now that I lay down at night and feel good about. Whereas I used to suffer because I was too dumb to tell somebody to stop kicking me in the shin. So if you choose to go to the gym and work out, that is righteous pain. If you, if you, you know, sit around your house and stub your toe a hundred times, that's not righteous pain. So I think that, that one of the things that's is maybe the quality of that point. Yeah. The quality of my suffering has improved measurably, even if I have, even if I haven't learned how to stop suffering. And most of my mentees, I'll be like, yeah, that sucks. Wow. That's awful. 
yeah, I'd be miserable too. And they're always like, but I think when you accept reality, the, the suffering either abates or it becomes righteous. So when it becomes righteous, looking back at your career thus far, are there different people and or events that helped reframe or frame the righteousness that helped you get to just the self-realization, self-actualization? Yeah. Who are some of those people? Like who've made, who has made a profound impact on your career thus far? It's, it's interesting because I was trying to think, uh, when you think about mentorship, I'm like, who are my mentors? And I have not been in a lot of formal mentor relationships. Like a lot of my young peers will be like, you're my mentor We're meeting once a month. But I, but I thought about it. There was a guy in my fraternity in college. I was a freshman. He was a senior. He was the president of the house. And that dude just looked like he knew what he was doing. And I stayed close to him. Over time, this guy's name is Tom Fox. He, he eventually, after school, worked for Gatorade, rose all the way up to be the head of sports marketing for Gatorade, ended up being the chief revenue officer at Arsenal, the premiership soccer club, and ran Aston Villa. He's had this really cool career. But one of the moments I remember clearly that was unbelievably powerful for me is we went out to lunch. Tom liked Tom's a blazer guy. I like to go to the university club, come to the U club. Shoot, I got to put a blazer on. So we go there and we're talking about a boss I have at the time who drove me crazy, who's my friend now. And my friend Tom looks me in the face and says, um, yeah, I don't think, I'm not sure that this is your boss's fault. And I said, what do you mean? He said, what would make you happy? What could your boss, what situation could your boss put you in tomorrow where you'd be like, I love this place and I never want to leave. I was like, what? He's like, well, I've heard a lot of complaints, but he said, I've never heard you describe what happiness looks like. He said, he said, do you, do you know what would make you happy? And I was like, well, broadly. And he's like, okay, all right, let's say you do. Have you, have you said to your boss, this is what I want. This is what would make me happy. This is what I want from you explicitly. I was like, no, I haven't. He's like, here's your assignment. Think about what could your boss tell you? You could work half time. You could be in charge of this group. You could, what could he say that you'd be delighted to be there uh, and, you'd, and you'd be all in? And then I want you to figure that out. Take as long as you need and then go ask him for it. If he says no, you don't need to stay there. If he says yes, you're happy. But he said right now, if you haven't figured out what will make you happy and ask for it, and this works in marriage too, by the way, it's your fault. It's not your boss's fault or your spouse's fault or even, frankly, your kid. This works with kids, believe it or not. So, so that was massive. Foxy, we call him Foxy, said, figure out what you want and ask for it. And if they say no, go someplace else where they're going to say yes. That was massive. And my second mentor is somebody I mentioned to you in a recent conversation is my friend Dick, who I worked with at Anderson Consulting. We were both losers, making very little money in cubicles and lamenting our lot in life. Dick eventually rises up, becomes an angel investor in Twitter, sells some companies, and he ran Twitter to public. And Dick, if, if Dick would ever watch this and hear me call him a mentor, he would absolutely be like, no, I'm not. But here's how he's a mentor. Dick continue dick i met dick when we were at anderson but he was he was at the annoyance theater as a founding member doing an improv show and he was goofy he's a goofy guy he's a he's a he's a character and he is still he stayed that guy when he ran twitter he stayed that guy post twitter running a massive venture fund and so what i took from dick is that you the greatest success is when you succeed on your own terms as yourself my friend tom fox likes to go to the u club where blazers that's him he loved that. He wasn't putting that on. He he did that and he went. But Dick, Dick doesn't wear suits and he doesn't talk in a bunch of fancy acronyms and stuff. He's a kind of wry comedian who sees most things as absurd. And that's how he ran Twitter. And he was wildly successful doing it. And he stayed happy the whole time. And he's, I just went on a trip with him. He said, say something nice about me, kind of jokingly. And I said, you're still you. He's like, I love that. And that, that was a, a, a kind of mentor for me to see that that was possible. That's amazing, Scott. And I, I think I've mentioned this in the past. What's fascinating about, well, the, loved hearing about Tom Fox, AKA Foxy, but also what you just said about Dick. Dick was one of the first investors in Tube Mogul where uh, you and I met, gosh, I don't know, uh, over 11. a decade ago. Yeah, yeah. a long, long time ago. 11 years ago. And so it just understanding and knowing that he was 
that he had the foresight to uh, in, invest with a handful of other just amazing people to help uh, my mentor, Brett Wilson, who was the founder and CEO of Tube, to, 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 who has instilled so much in me. And one of the things that, and down the line, I'm going to have Brett come on, but one of the things that I have valued so much is Brett always pushed, just be your authentic self, just be real, get shit done, make shit happen, but just show up and just have that grittiness and, but be yourself. Don't pretend to be other people. And so it, it's really refreshing to hear just how, um, one of your, one of your mentors, one of my mentors who actually worked together to build a business where coming full circle, obviously in, in past roles, our teams had worked with, with one another, just uh, really insightful how, how people that get it, how they're able to articulate their, the differentiators, but also have that, 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 that realization going back to what you were saying 10, 15 minutes ago about building that sauce, creating that sauce, just the, the, the level of being vulnerable, failing, thinking that you don't know how to do, make the sauce. The sauce is still getting made. So you were saying the phrase you used a second ago was being your authentic self. And I can, again, imagine myself at 25 being like, fuck does that I don't mean? Know what my, what's my authentic self? Like, what is that? I, yeah, if I knew what it was, I'd be it right now. Yeah. And because I had thought that being your authentic self was being your perfect self, being your authentic self when you, when you stopped, when I stopped being unfocused, when I stopped wishing I was outside screwing around instead of sitting in my cubicle proofreading technical manuals. Being what I what I what I've come to realize over time is being your authentic self is sort of straddling ego and shadow. So so it's it's about it's about owning those best parts of yourself, but then also it's about owning those other things and recognizing that those things you might have thought were the worst parts of yourself. I'm like a weird competitor. Like I have this like when I play pickleball with my wife, I turn into a monster because I want to win so bad. And then I try and temper it and stuff. When you play but, with or when you play yeah. against? Okay. More with, to be oh, honest. Yeah. We played another yeah. couple last night and I turned into a monster. And I used to think I got I to gotta, I gotta kill that part of me. But but there's a that weird competitive kind of driven thing is a pretty, that's helped me a lot. Help and me. So, yeah. So understanding, being able to see it. Okay, here I am. I'm going crazy. What am I going to do with this? I can make fun of it a little bit. I can harness it. I can work with it. But but being your authentic self means, like, here's another great example, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Play it back, maybe not. I I had to realize that I, 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 I so want to be cool and fit in and be liked, right? But I also think Spandau Ballet is one of the greatest bands ever. And a lot of people would make fun of me because they're a kind of preening 80s band that sang that song true. But I loved them. But I also love being in a mosh pit and seeing a band called Hate Breed. And I had to real and, and but I would kind of keep quiet about both of them because one was too pretty and one was too ugly. And and then I like a lot of stuff in the middle too, right? I can like a Wilco show too. What yeah. I had to realize was that's all me. Spana Ballet and Hate Breed and Wilco, that is all me and it's all okay. And I don't have to be, there are no guilty pleasures. Um, you know, that, that finding your authentic self is literally, it's all there. It, it doesn't mean finding it. It almost means uncovering all the shit that, that you're, tr we put covers over all kinds of stuff. Your authentic self is when you just stop covering how you react to things because you're worried how other people might perceive it.